All right, we're doing a video today on my 923 um, A1 um, 250 Cummins. Got a lot of uh, messages about it. Um, everyone kind of saw the 16-speed swap for the Caterpillar. Uh, I had a few video. People asked me if I do a video or an overview of everything since, since the thread had kind of a lot of steps to it. Um, <clears throat> first, um, 7155 is about three times bigger than the Allison. Um, had a lot of air vents on it and everything else, as you can see. Um, and so we had to raise the um, cab two and a quarter of an inch was the last kind of step, but had to be done. Pull the cab out through the whole mod anyway. Um, went with a normal SAE one bell housing off a big clamp, off a big cam 400. Um, had to redo the engine mounts, cut the old ones off, which were angled. Um, made those pretty much 90 degree brackets um, at a half inch plate. And had to make new engine mounts. Um, just three quarter inch plate. And then it's actually like that. 400 degree gusts on it. And then uh, the actual engine bell housing has brackets on it, as you can see right there, a little bit. Um, that are just straight off and kind of had an angle to it. Um, basically, the same setup that the big cams and the 920s do. Um, of course, I went and redid my fuel system on this side and got rid of the canister. Um, Went ahead and installed two air tanks with a uh, dryer on them. Their own mister, the regulator. Um, requires a lot of air. It's actually fed off of the uh, spring brake tank. Um, had to make a whole rear mount. Um, got rid of the other one. Uh, the stock one wasn't going to work real well. Um, this one here is just made half inch plate going across. Same kind of half inch brackets. Going down to the frame, across. Um, it's actually uh, just pretty simple. It's actually got angle iron on the bottom side of it. You can see a little bit. I'm not sure about on the other side. Um, the angle iron, just uh, three eighth angle iron, um, three by three. Um, had to have. I actually use this drive shaft. So it's a little bit offset. Um, goes to the passenger side more. Um, use a regular old spicer joint on this end. It actually goes into a companion flange on the transfer case side in place of the uh, jack shaft. Um, transfer case did get moved back six inches, or six and a half, eight, actually eight and a half inches, or eight inches total moved back from the original spot. Um, of course, there's a dipstick tube for the transmission. Um, had to run five inch exhaust pipe up through there on the inside of the bracket. Um, as far as the uh, Passenger side goes. Yeah, a little bit easier to see some things over here. Um, you see, there's the angle iron for the bracket. Everything. Um, use a lot of hockey pucks for uh, bushings. Seem to work the best. Um, you also, see there's a little bit more of the transmission thing in there. I'm gonna crawl up into the truck here a second. That. And then um, five inch exhaust has to go. A straight down bend because there is a there's the engine house the engine bell housing and bracket so five inch, I went with a five inch pipe I plan on going with a motor upgrade eventually so no point redoing exhaust twice um, you still can see here um, those brackets had to be made um, went ahead and upgraded the battery box so it took two storage boxes to put them together um, to cover that little gap that was going to be there. Um, and whatnot. Um, did a little more insulation up under the firewall and whatnot too, but that's a major. Um, crawl up underneath here. You can see the original mark for the transfer case was for that bracket on the frame right there. How far it went back. Um, I had to have one drive shaft made um, to make it work. It's pretty short, but it costs the most money on anything. Um, see the five inch pipe drop straight down next to the frame rail and back. Um, I've actually got an old leak up front on the crank, on the crank seal. Need to replace it this week. Um, but it's in there pretty well. Um, I don't have my front drive shaft there. I was going to have kind of a to redo that front cross member um, for the uh, center shaft bearing. I decided to kind of uh, wait on that because I'm planning on upgrading to a uh, Hemet transfer case. A little bit stronger. 
Um, but you can see this has no cooler on it either. So it's uh, kind of all together. Um, you know, got a Craigslist leaking back, blowing back everything right now. Um, but you see that drive shafts out. Um, the Hemet transfer case actually will drop down a lot further than this one, a little bit more towards the bottom of the fuel tank. So, but it'll be kind of uh, cockeyed on it as to what works better. Um, and I believe I'm actually going to drop that cross member down a uh, half an inch to a full inch, and hopefully I can get away with um, with that. Uh, maybe a better drive line angle. But that's it. Um, the trimmer doesn't, doesn't have a cooler on it, so that's kind of one thing I can get rid of, um, and then um, use a stock center unit for the transmission. Um, and then, I mean, that's about it. That was a pretty hard. Easiest part was the transfer case. Everything else is pretty difficult. Um, I'll go up to the cab right now so you can see the internals of how I got everything in there set up. All right, moved inside. Um, shifter's pretty well set up right there. It's actually a fold-down unit. Um, it's made just like that. Pull the, pull the pin, it folds straight down his face. Um, so I can actually sleep in here if I want to. Um, AC unit right there. Um, it does run real well. Um, can reach um, 65 in about half a mile um, with the non-turbo truck. Um, and it cruises about 1850 at about 68 miles an hour where it kind of likes to sit. It will top out at 83 miles an hour at 2250 at the guy that the governor set at. Um, but it does pull a lot better than the Allison um, by far. I actually average about eight more miles an eight more miles an hour um, between certain ranges using that. Um, using that using the Caterpillar versus the Allison. Um, so it does hold speed better, especially on hills. Um, having so many gears to choose from. Basically, I have two gears between whatever the Allison would have between five and four. I have four. I have fourteenth and thirteenth. And then my 12th will be equal to the 4th gear on the Allison, 15 equal to the 5th gear on the Allison. Uh, so, that's uh, about it. Um, well, and well worth a modification. Um, I Honestly, I think I have everything into it. I'm under 3,000. So, I mean, but I'd gone through two Allisons. Um, so, much point. I was only getting about 30,000 miles out of them. So, uh, much, not much point on that. Um, so... Went ahead and upgraded it to it, but it is set up now for a big cam. So all I'd rather do is make a make a front mount. I'll put the big cam in it and go from there. But that's for now on the 16 speed install and what all you have to do to it. I mean it. Honestly, I have about two and a half weeks worth of work into it, just directly. Um, you do also have to modify the floor of the truck. Um, under there, you get the little channel runs cut a, cut the middle ones out all the way across, and then basically make it re. Uh, Resupport it with some little, a little bit more narrow channel. Um, so clearly a valve body on the transmission. So, but other than that, it's a little modification. Um, and that to me, it's a lot easier having to change gears all the time.